All right, so this is our this is our closing here. Take a view of the pool. You can still hear me, so you don't need to re record me while I'm talking. So basically, the first thing we're going to do in this pool is we're going to prep the front. The, we're going to prep the pool for the closing. And when I say prep, that means take the eyeballs out of the return fixtures. And hmm. I believe it's a Jason. My seat removal tools missing out of my toolbox all of a sudden. Nice spider right there. Wonder where that tool ended up. Thankfully they came out easy. Basically, there's a tool that if these come apart, see that's everything worked out great there. We got a stair return as well. See, like that one didn't come out. But here, come here, bring the camera over here, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Basically, inside the return here, there's these two little grooves. For some reason, my tool is missing out of my toolbox. I'll have to ask my helper why that is. But um, it's my fault for not checking before I came here as well. But basically, there's a tool that goes in here. It's called a seat removal tool. And uh, so when you go to take these returns out of the wall fitting there and basically only these two parts come out, come out and this is left in the wall and you can't get it out um, you know luckily these came out easy uh, some guys will, will put the blues on you know and they'll wrench on there but of course what happens there is the threads start to get messed up around here so they had unfortunately i don't have the tool to show you i'm going to get a clip of one and kind of insert it in in this video hopefully and uh but that that's the tool that's needed to uh to take these out so we're going to basically uh, put this back together all right so that's that's the prep for the returns now we're going to check the skimmers Take the skimmer lid off, pull the skimmer basket out. Now, now this is the difference between taking care of your pool and not taking care of your pool. These these people obviously take care of their pool. You know, there's very minimal debris. When, when I showed up today, the customer, customer said there's not much going on in there but a skimmer. But, uh, you know, basically it, it just makes life easy. Now, the weird door has already been taken out. Okay. So now we're going to go take out the basket for the other skimmer. Now one question people always ask is, how far do you drain the water when you're closing your pool? And uh, that's, that, that's, a, that's a conversation you probably could take up a video all in itself. But in, in a short story, in a short nutshell, I like to drain it. If you zoom in on the return fitting right there. You can see the water's just below the opening there. And that's the, uh, that's the level that I like to, to do it. So that way when you're blowing the water out with your vacuum, which we're gonna see here in a little bit because we're gonna be doing that part next, 
you're able to blow all the water out of the lines. Now there are there are other like I said we could we could it's a topic we could keep going on and on with because there are ways where you can close your pool by not draining any water out of the pool at all. But that's usually when you're working in an area with a high groundwater table and you run the risk of the liner or the pool floating if you drain the pool. So in those situations, you would not want to drain your pool. So they have what they call blow through gizmos for your skimmers. Basically, there's a plug at the top of the, of the gizmo. We're going to talk about gizmos a little more. Hopefully. Now, of course, if you're watching this video in a short and you're wondering why I'm not talking about specific things, you're going to have to binge watch this whole series. This is going to be like a long series, so, so you're going to have to refer to other videos to kind of catch the whole thing. But I will hopefully be able to post this entire video from start to finish so that you can kind of see that unedited, all that good stuff. Even the part about my tools not being in my toolbox. But we lucked out. First thing I'm going to do when I get to work tomorrow is get a seat removal tool in my toolbox. Okay. And while we're at it, maybe, uh, maybe organize my toolbox. Don't zoom in on my toolbox. Everybody's going to laugh at me. That's okay. You can all laugh at me. Definitely all laugh at me. All right, so basically, let's talk about what I'm going to be doing here. This is a sand filter with a multi port valve, which is the same filter that we have at my house on the pool that we just built. I just haven't gotten you any, any uh, video of that one yet. So, as you know, basically the pump pumps the water in goes into the filter, comes back out to the pool. So we're disconnecting the connection between the pump and the filter. That's one of the first things that I like to do. And I also like to open the, the pump lid. Now, if this were the, now if there was a different type of filter, like you had a DE filter or a cartridge filter, there would be a bleeder valve on the top of your filter you would want to really open that to let the air in so that all the water, you, if you listen closely, you, you, you can hear all the water draining back through. So that's what we're looking for. So let me grab a flathead screwdriver. And I found one real quick. So basically on the, on the Hayward Super Pump here, there are two drain plugs that you have to take apart. One is right here on the side. I'm going to take that one out with a flathead screwdriver. And this is what the drain plug looks like. I usually just drop them right into the skimmer basket. And there's another one on the front of the pump here. Typically, most, most pumps have two drain plugs. Some smaller, some smaller pumps only have one. Okay, so now... Everything's draining out of the pump, and what we're doing is, what I like to do is any any part that I take off, like a hose clamp, even O-rings, drain plugs. Uh, let's let's see, even on the sand filter, I like to take the sight glass out, and uh, now drain all the water out. Now inside the sight glass, there should be an O-ring in here, so usually you can just pick that out with your finger. So that's very important. That's one of those things that a lot of people don't realize that, that there is an O-ring, a gasket in here so that the sight glass seals to the plastic. It's very important you save that. It's very important that you have one. Okay, so now this, the, uh, the tank itself has a drain plug. They're usually in the most inconvenient spot to get to, but this one isn't bad. 
So I'm going to take my little blue pliers here. And we're just going to gently loosen that up. Now, there's a lot of water in this tank. And there's a lot of sand in this tank. It's not going to all drain out immediately. It may take an hour. It might take two hours. It might take 15 minutes. It depends. But if you see your tank still draining out, even after you disassemble everything, don't be alarmed. All right, so we're going to get this hose out of, the, out of our way. Now, on the top of the tank here, um, there's all different settings, you know, backwash, uh, it's hard to read, you know, this is the one we're looking for, the one that says closed. So what we want to do is we want to turn this multi-port, we push down and to the side. And now this multi-port is in the closed and winterization position. Strangest thing. Even my, my big blue pliers aren't, aren't where they need to be. I, I clearly did not check my toolbox before we came over. I'm paying the price, but luckily my brute strength was able to take that out. You know, this is this. This is the other one. Okay, so now, real quick with unions, I can kind of. Let me give a little lesson on unions here real quick. Um, basically, there's a gasket in here. Now, this, this particular gasket is fused on there. You know, you wouldn't want to take that one off. When they're loose and they're falling off, and they fall on the ground when you take the union off, those are the ones that go in the basket. So, um, basically, this is a nut, and this is kind of like the bolt is the way to look at it. So, that would go in. It's basically a way to disconnect everything. And you're, you're only supposed to hand tighten them, but a lot of times you need a set of big blue pliers to get them off. And sometimes the older they get, you have to give them a little bit of a crank with a set of big blues. But I wanted to show the position because a lot of times people don't know which way to go with them. The way I do it is I always, the nut would always be on my right. The threads would always be on my left. That's kind of where I, pos I try to position my body. So that way I know that when I'm trying to loosen the nut, I'm pulling down. And when I'm putting the nut on, I'm pushing it on as I go. I'm pushing the union on. And when I'm taking it off, I'm taking it off. So that's kind of how I do that. Because if you go the wrong way with a set of pliers, you could break it pretty easy. Now the pump should have a grounding wire. We'll put that back in there. I think that's all that's coming out of there. But um, this gasket here, I definitely leave that one on. I don't take that off. It is good to, there, this is called a housing gasket, a pump housing gasket. And a lot of times um, you want to inspect the cover. You want to inspect uh, the gasket in here because if this gasket goes bad or it's built up with debris your pumps not going to get a good prime You're going to get a you know some air in the pump and stuff like that. So you want to You know you want to inspect that now. This is a brand new pump the gaskets brand new So everything's brand new on it, but the older things get things need inspection and uh, Usually the things that go bad are gaskets and o-rings and stuff like that, but this pump should have a grounding lug here and it doesn't. So somewhere this this probably the ground wire must have got buried in over time. Alright, so now we're gonna pull this out. What I like to do is just kind of you know shake off any loose stuff like some rocks and stuff like that. Put this off to the side. Okay, so here oh here's the ground wire right here so this was just never this was just never connected maybe it's because it was short oh, 
I'll talk to him about that before we leave. But... Okay, so he did, he's got this valve broken. Oh, these are his. That's what it is. All right. So we're going to open both. You can still turn it. Even though this valve broke, you can still. You know, he just needs to replace this top. I don't think I have one in my truck, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, it's a simple fix. The guy did say that he wanted to get some work done on his retaining wall. And uh, so he said he's going to. He's going to give our company, Juliano's Pools, a call to have a sales guy come over and try to regrade their yard. He's got a retaining wall over on the back side there that's kind of fallen down. So as you see, the water's draining through pretty good. All right, so basically everything's prepped here now. Now we're, we're, do, we're ready to uh, winterize the plumbing line. So I'm going to go get an extension cord, my screamer vax, and I'm going to, I'm probably going to, do things a little unconventional so that way my wife can keep recording but uh we'll be okay oh here's my big blues right here see i put them down <laughs> all right so i'm gonna go get my uh my vacuum this is what i use to blow out the winter line, the, the plumbing lines. Um, it's called a screamer vac. In some situations, a shot vac will work too. Um, but with this vacuum here, you know, this is, this is going to blow really good. So um, let's grab an extension cord. Okay, should be all set. So the first ones that we're gonna do, uh, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll blow the return lines. And the reason I'm gonna blow the return lines is because I before I get my, uh, my screamer back here taped into the suction line, the skimmer and the main drains, I want to have the returns plug because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna when I add my winterization chemicals, my shock and my winterizer, I'm going to actually blow, start blowing in through the main drain. It's going to create a lot of ripples in the water and it's going to stir up all the chemicals. So that way the chemicals can be mixed thoroughly into the pool. All right, let me just plug this extension cord in. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duct tape one end of my my hose here to the returns, and uh, he probably gets a little bit of water leaking right there in the connection because this kind of comes up easy. But I'm sure he knows that. Luckily, we're able to get it out of our way. All right, so I'm just gonna duct tape this on here so that way I can still, I can go to the pool and show you things while things are blowing. And uh, yeah, it just, you know me, I love duct tape and a pool guy loves duct tape. So. That's about it. Hopefully this doesn't come apart while well, it's blowing. I don't believe it's going to, but we'll just put a little bit more extra tape just to make sure. Okay. So I hope everybody's enjoying this. And for those of you who are actually watching this, thank you. God bless you. Because without you, 
I got nobody to watch me. It makes me feel like I'm worthy when I see people watching me. All right, we're blowing. Let's go check it out. Come on in right here and you see. So one thing I'm seeing is I'm seeing that this one kind of blew first. So what I'll do is since, since we have one line over there coming over, coming over, all these returns are teed underground and I want to make sure that every last drop is out. So I'll, I'll stick my hand over here. I'll even come back to this one, stick my hand over this one. And what I'm going to do is, yeah, you see that? You see the difference? See how there's nothing coming out, but then I'll put my hand on it. Watch, ready? Okay. So that line's clear. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug that line. And just keep watching the pool. I'm going to go get the plugs. I try to quickly talk about plugs for you. Everything here is in great condition. Okay, we got Teflon. And we got our screw plugs. And we're looking for a flathead screwdriver, which I just had. Yep. Keeping track of tools is rough, let me tell you. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I'm going to, I'm not going to, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to put these plugs in all the way just yet. And the reason why is I'm going to show you why afterwards. But what we want to do is just put them in gently. Now, when I put this plug in here, that return right there to your right should start blowing out a lot harder if you want to try to get footage of that. No, guess not. It's all clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to that one. And I'm going to put a plug over that one. And see if any more comes out of that one. And basically all I'm doing is I'm just making sure that I'm getting every last drop of water out of these lines. I'm able to do that. The water, the, 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 the pool water is below these returns. See our spider? All right, so not much more came out of there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, this is the part, an, another, and this is another thing. I'm, I'm, I'm able to add antifreeze in from down, down here where the pump and filter is. Let me shut the pump off. I'm actually able to add antifreeze and from that end down there by the pump and filter and from the pool end because, because the water is below the returns. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to find something out of my truck here. I'm looking for a fitting that I can thread into the skimmer. okay I have other things I can use these plumbing you know basically everything's like a uh, like Lego parts there's a million Lego parts in the pool world and you just get to put it all together so that's basically what we're gonna be doing but I want to put some antifreeze in through the returns all right, so this is our pool antifreeze that we got at our local Ocean State job lot. 
I'm just going to stick one end in. And I'm pouring antifree. I'm sure I'm leaking some because I didn't have the fitting I was looking for. We're going to pour a good healthy amount in. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll I'll take my screw plug, which has Teflon on it and an O-ring. If you want to zoom in, this is the screw plug. Always hold in your left, wrap over the top, so that way when you tighten the plug, the Teflon tightens into it. I don't put Teflon around the O-ring. That's not what an O-ring is designed for. Very important not to cross thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hand tighten those for now and I'll come back and tighten them fully after. All right. Okay. So this is the one where I just put a plug on temporarily. I'm going to undo that. Put my Tiger Flex in. Pour some antifreeze in. And what I'm doing is I'm pouring antifreeze in from both sides. You got to think, if you got to think that if, as the pool fills up over the winter, if any water is going to get into these plumbing lines, it's going to be from the pool side first. And that's the water that you want to protect from freezing. So this is why I add antifreeze in. From the front side of the pool impossible now you can add the antifreeze from the other side by the pump and filter and then take your screamer vac and blow it uphill however i don't like to do that because i think that you're just blowing air pressure into your plumbing line that could be an older plumbing line and it could be fragile and it could it, you know, you're going to be creating a lot of back pressure by doing that so I don't I'm not saying you can't do it I'm not saying people don't do it I'm just saying I don't do it and I'm telling you why I don't do it so okay I wonder if this micro pick microphones picking up with how hard I'm breathing I'm not used to talking and working how am I doing cool support from the wife Shout out to the wife. Okay. So we got our antifreeze in. And it looks like the liner needs to be trimmed a little more right here in order for that plug to go in. So I'm going to go get my, my knife. My wife's going to zoom in on that fitting there if she can. And she's going to see... And inside, there's some extra line of material that just never got cut out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife. And I'm going to cut. That's okay if you can't get it. I'm explaining it. But basically, I'm going to take my knife and cut that. These are some things that just get overlooked sometimes and I'm glad you get to see. And, and that can make all the difference in the world between a, a, a screw plug sealing properly throughout the winter or leaking, which is gonna cause your pipes to allow water to come in. And uh, during the winter, they're gonna freeze. I'm not saying they're gonna break, but I'm saying they could break. So these are just little things that you wanna so you see how much easier that's screwed in now that I cut that out? Get a nice tight seal. Normally I would tighten this with my seat removal tool. You just want to feel it. You'll feel it. It's, you know, just snug, but you don't want to wrench on it to where you're breaking things either. I know some of you guys might be, might be a lot stronger than I am, so don't go... I know if you're benching 300, don't go, don't go benching 300 on a, on a return plate, if you get what I'm saying. 
Okay, so now, now what we need to do, our, our return lines are all winterized. And uh, we're gonna start winterizing our skimmer lines and the main drain line, which is down in the bottom of the pool. See, some of you were wondering, are you gonna go back and tighten that plug in the deep end? Of course I am. Of course I am. <laughs> Someday you might catch me, trust. And if you do, let me know. I'll go back and do the job again right. Okay, so now we're gonna hook up our skimmer line or our screamer back line to the intake manifold. We're also gonna add antifreeze in through here too. So if you've made it this whole video and you've just recently subscribed to my channel, one, I'm definitely noticing. I'm noticing my channel increasing in subscribers every day. Can't thank everybody enough. It's 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 fun. Excuse me for wiping the sweat. It's definitely fun. Of course my family thinks I'm crazy, but I don't know. I've, I've personally wanted to do a YouTube channel for close to 10 years now. I've had the ideas bouncing around in my head. And here I am just kind of putting it into action finally. Why I didn't do it sooner? I don't know. It wasn't the right time in my life, I guess. It wasn't, it wasn't you know, I'm still... Not sure I'm ready for it now, but we're going for it, that's for sure. Usually you would do this with two people and another person would just be holding the hose. And that's what my wife would be doing, but I feel like it's more important that she's there holding the camera for you people so, so that you can all see. So hopefully everybody respects that. So, before I start just blowing away, and into here, I want to I want to make sure that we know that this is the main drain line. So we're going to close the main drain line and come back to that after. We know that these valves are broken, but you can still turn them. So this line is now closed. So we're going to be blowing into this line, and we're going to find out which one is blowing. All right. I want to go out to the pool, and I'll start blowing. Figuratively, not literally. There we go. Now, I'm just going to explain something while, while Jess is, maybe she can go a little closer to that. Cause it's going to start coming out like a geyser and a little bit like Old Faithful. Now, a lot of times what you can do is with the other person over by the pump and filter, they can take the hose out a little bit, let the water retract back into the line, and then start again with an initial blow of um, of air going through the line. But and I and if and if it starts kind of taking forever, I might just shut the vacuum off and restart it. But I think eventually, throughout me talking and. Uh, that vacuum blowing that it'll do its thing. So and basically I'm basically thinking what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the vacuum and I'm gonna shut it off one time and then uh maybe the second time it'll go. Or maybe what I'll do is I'll untape everything while Jessica keeps going. And then she can come back to me. All right, here we go. And pop one off. So I'm guessing that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm about 75 feet away from everybody. I have no idea what's going on. 
but I'm taking the, the back on, I'm taking the back on and off. I'm sure it's really loud. Basically, I just wanted to give it a little pop, and then I'll come back. Maybe it's blowing a little bit better. I don't know, but we're, we're gonna find out. Oh, okay. So now I now I see everything's blowing out nice and clear. That's good. So now we're gonna do the uh, the second skimmer now. And uh, so basically, what I'll do is I'll now you can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm but I'm turning that valve to the other skimmer. So that other skimmer is going to start blowing now. So I guess what we'll do is we'll do that the same way. We'll let that blow a little bit. And then we'll come back and we'll pop it. We'll pop it open and close a little bit. And what that's going to do is that's going to... Yeah, see, that's a good, good flow of water coming out of that line right there. That's good. So while that's doing that... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some of that antifreeze down into that other skimmer that we already blew out. Now, if you're working with a new guy and you're out on the job and you wanna get back at him for something that he did bad to you, this literally happened to me on one of my first days ever working. The, 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 I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, I, don't, I don't know if I wanna tell the guy's name, but his name started with a T, let's put it that way. And uh, I'm going to save a little bit of antifreeze for that return over there by the pump. But basically, he told me to dump that antifreeze in, like he said, and then he told me to stick my head down into the skimmer to see if it all went down there or not. He switched the valve on me, and all the antifreeze blew right into my face. And... Uh, so now we're we're pop we're popping it now, on and off. That's what we're doing. You know, you just do you do the pop in like two or three times, and you let it go. We'll see how that's looking. Oh, so that that's in a good stage right there. I think what we'll do is we'll let that go a little bit longer. And while that's doing that, I'm going to screw in the gizmo into that other skimmer. I'm going to add a little bit of Teflon to the threads of the gizmo. So this is a gizmo here now. This gizmo... Uh, this gizmo is not the right size, but this is what the homeowner has, and it technically will do the job. But basically, all it does is if this skimmer fills up with water, and that water freezes, when that ice goes to expand, the gizmo can absorb that space. It can, it can allow that movement of the ice to go to the gizmo, and it just puts a little air in there. So I'm going to leave that open. I'm going to end up pouring some antifreeze into the skimmer as well. And what I'll do is I'll empty it. I'll put an empty bottle of uh, chemicals, uh, an empty jug in there, and that'll just add as a little bit more space in, within the skimmer to absorb the expansion of the ice. Okay, so hopefully you were able to hear me through all that. I know I was having a hard time hearing myself. I think my wife did a fantastic job of recording things along the way there. A lot of, a lot of, I'm not gonna lie, I had a comment. I'm sure some of you could find. Somebody said my wife wasn't working and helping me. First of all, I love that everybody watches my channel and leaves comments. I know I'm going to have bad comments. I know I'm going to have a mostly better than good, I hope. But trust me, anybody that's married knows their wife is helping. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. If you're not married, maybe you just haven't found the right girl yet. Give it some time.
Okay, so now we're also going to pour a little bit of antifreeze down in there. And save a little bit to the other end. Okay, so now with this being done, now now we have we so 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 what we have done is we have winterized our return lines. We have winterized our skimmer lines. Now we still have the main drain line. And now the main drain is not one of those things where you can just dive down in there. And this is what I was talking about putting one of these bottles in here. I'll squish it a little bit, put the cap back on. Okay, so that's a little trick I see all the time. But with that particular skimmer, I'm gonna, that's how I'm going to do it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to open up the valve to the the main drain, and we're going to start circulating all the water. And we're going to let it circulate, and we're going to let it blow around for a little bit while I'm pouring in the chemicals. I'm going to be adding shock and winterizer to the pool itself. So I want all that to kind of mix up. And uh, I mean, it's no different, than, no different than when you're making brownies, you know, you got to mix that stuff up. All right. So now what we do is we close this line. Because we don't want any air blowing into the skimmer line now. So we're closing that. We open the main drain. We're going to blow air into the main drain. We're going to add our chemicals. When we think we've got it to a, to a good point, what I'm going to do is I'll come over here and um, I will take off the tape and I'll get ready. I'll be blowing. I'll close the valve real quick, pull this away, and I'll put a rubber plug in here. And what that does is it airlocks that line. So basically as the water wants to come back up the, up the line, it can't because there's air trapped in between. So that's what air locking is. And that's what we're going to do during this next stage. And uh, after I do that, that's when I'm going to add my chemicals, my antifreeze into this line. Now, I know maybe some of you are wondering when I'm doing that, but I will. Okay, so now Jessica's going to go to the, to the pool. And we're going to start blowing into the main drain. The pool's going to start stirring around, mixing all around. And we're going to add our shock and winterizer to the pool. You'll start to see bubbles coming out. All that water's blowing out of the main drain line now. Now this is something that's, that would technically be difficult to do with a shot vac. You, I mean, you could try it, see if it works. If it works, great. You lucked out. Um, but it might not. And it might not work out. Some people use like air compressors, air tanks, stuff like that. So here we're adding shock that we got at our local Ocean State job lot for literally, I think $6 a gallon. I think altogether the chemicals that we spent to close this pool was $50. Now, look, some of you guys, I'm sure, you got these carboys that you're lugging around. You don't want to be, you don't want to be walking around the pool with, you know, a carboy that, that, that weighs five gallons worth of liquid. But if you read these bottles, okay, I think, I think what happened was my, uh, my hose came disconnected. My hose came untaped. So I'm just going to go put that back on real quick. better now that's basically uh somebody's saying hurry up again this is a lot easier somebody else is here but i'm trying to get this all for you i want you to see what's going on i want you to see that one person can close the pool okay one person can close your pool but you can you can winterize your plumbing lines one person Okay, so now we're back in action. 
I think we stopped somewhere about over here. But anyway, as I was saying, you if you read these chemicals, if you read them, it says disp disperse contents around the pool evenly. And that's what I'm doing now. This pool's two years two years old, the liner's two years old. I don't want to pour two gallons of shock down the same spot. I know I'm stirring everything around. I'm just trying to make my point. I'm trying to defend my case. You can pour it in the same spot. I've definitely done it. Seven closings in one day, eight closings in one day. You get to that last closing and you just want to go home. You pour it in. Okay. So now, now what we're going to do is we're going to go airlock this main drain now. So we're going to go back to the pump and filter. See, all those, see as, as we're walking away, I'm, I'm looking at that pool stirring up real good. And all those chemicals are stirring up real good. And that's what you want. All right. So, I'm going to put my hand on here. And if it's loud, I'm sorry. It won't last long. It's literally just going to last as long as it takes me to untape this. But... All right, that was good. I'm glad everybody got to see that. <laughs> let me let me talk this out. Let me explain why I did that. First of all, I I can I can rewinterize this line here. I can. That was just merely to put chemicals in the pool. So let's do that again. Jess, just go double check that everything's blowing again, just so we can be sure. guessing everybody's liking what they're seeing. As soon as I see her come back to me, I will uh, airlock this. You got the thumbs up? All right. We're shoving that plug in there. We're tightening it. Everything is airlocked. I'm going to grab a set of pliers here. Okay, so I think I'm going to come to the point here where I'm going to wrap things up. Now, obviously, there's another step to closing your pool. There's there's obviously steps that didn't get talked about, you know, closing uh, slide lines, deck jets, waterfall features, stuff like that. This is a basic closing. So if you, if you have a pool that has some complicated features and you have questions, feel free to reach out to me. I do try to respond to questions comments uh, appropriate comments like always but this video this video was to show how you winterize your plumbing lines and prepare your pool to be put to rest with a pool cover okay thanks everybody for watching we'll see you on the next one